Hey guys, Coach Mike Murphy with All Star CNC Products back with you. Uh, over the years, customers have always talked to us about the difficulty in holding small parts. Uh, so the fact that we're in the month of October, we're going to start working on some pumpkins uh, that are pretty small. Five inches by seven inches with the eye holes and the nose. Uh, we found this uh, image online and we've put it into our V-Carve and uh, got the Vetric file to cut these small parts. Uh, five by seven with the holes. So difficulty if you're going to try to do that on an MDF downdraft table. So what we're going to do is make a dedicated fixture that we talk about to get onto those small parts. So what we've done is made a Baltic birch board, non-porous, not like an MDF downdraft. Baltic birch isn't going to leak any air. We're going to use our cover gasket. Uh, we've cut this to 30 inches, the same width as the fixture that we're going to be using. And we're going to utilize our engraving bit to really get that fine line that we're looking for out of the cover gasket. So you'll see that happen. Uh, we're excited to get into this and uh, stay tuned to watch these parts cut. So as mentioned, we're going to be using cover gasketing to cut these pumpkins on our non-porous dedicated fixture. Uh, cover gasket uh, we offer to our customers in three different manners. Uh, our spoil board cover is enough to cover a fixture. It's kind of on the shelf, pre-cut, ready to go for you guys. Uh, another great option is our zone board cover. Uh, zone board cover is pre-cut to a specific width. Um, a lot of our customers, one customer in particular likes an 18 inch wide. This is longer in length, 150 feet, kind of like bulk buying because he certainly likes the size that we provide to him. And then we also have what we call LFCs, uh, pre-cut to one foot wide and you just order by the length. How long do you want it? Uh, we also do it in different thicknesses, uh, 1 32nd, a 1 16th and a 1 8th. Uh, typically the 132nd for our plastics customers because it's flat, consistent material. 116th for the wood customers because a little bit of variation. And then the 8th inch for customers that have a product with a lot of warp or grain to it, uh, poly furniture, that kind of stuff uh, for the 8th inch. But for the pumpkins, we're going to be cutting it out of wood. So the 116th inch material is what we're going to be uh, utilizing and uh, look forward to uh, cutting those up. Uh, now we're ready to apply our gasket material to the dedicated fixture board. Uh, over the years, uh, we've learned that our customers like to do things in a variety of different ways. Uh, whatever works for them, uh, we're happy with. Um, one of the things that we hear about often that we think is a good idea is to leave the paper backing on the gasket material. The reason we like to leave the paper backing on there is the paper isn't going to stretch. The gasket may stretch a little bit. So by leaving the paper on there, it ensures that we're not going to get stretching as we lay that material out. And if we get this right, uh, right on line here to that fixture, get it started on the right angle. And now we're able to pull this material back. Gaskets in place, right onto the edge there. And we use that paper to give it a little stability. We can always make that adjustment once we get that flattened out. And now that that material is all laid out, get some of those air pockets out as best we can. What we're going to do is take this paper off in one shot. And again, this is the 1 16th inch material because we'll be getting cutting wood components. Boom. If there is an air pocket, just a slight little pinhole is going to get that air removed from that air bubble. And we're off and ready to run. Okay, so now that we got the 30 degree engraving bit into the spindle, we've adjusted our Z. Uh, what we want to do is cut, we did to about a 0.065 Z0 to the top of the gasket. Cut it to about an 065, that's the thickness of the gasket. So we're cutting to the fixture, not through it. And as we press this play button, we're going to do the... Here it comes, we're going to gasket for these pumpkins. What we're intending to do here is we're going to cut the ID and the OD of the channel that we're going to use for the tooling for this pumpkin. By oversizing the channel, as the tooling cuts these pumpkins, it's not going to rub into the gasket. We're doing this at 25 inches a minute, 18,000 RPM with our engraving bit. You could do it with a traditional tool, but the engraving bit allows for two clean edges, uh, especially for 
repetitive use. To have that clean edge, it, it helps keep it in place. And we'll also make the vacuum pocket uh, inside for the pumpkin, put a vacuum hole through there to make sure that we get vacuum to the part because obviously with a non-porous fixture board, we need to get that vacuum to there. So uh, this will take a couple hours to finish. Uh, once we do that, we'll show you how we weed out the gasket that's not gonna be utilized, um, do all that, and uh, we'll go from there. Okay, so that completes our gasket setup. Uh, our final pumpkin is completed. Uh, as we look here, uh, this took us about two hours. Uh, not uh, something that we want to worry about too much is, or something we do want to worry about, is adhesive buildup on the tooling. So during the two hours, we took a little pause, clean that tooling off so we get back to clean cuts. And what we're gonna do here now is peel away this vacuum area. That'll be our vacuum cavity or, or pocket for the mouth. Uh, we have our tool path here that will start to, to weed out and then we'll take this vacuum cavity out for each pumpkin. So we're going to get through this. Uh, we won't make you watch as we clean all these up, but we're going to get that. And then we're also going to do the vacuum holes for each of those pumpkins and uh, we'll get back to making these things and uh, we'll go from there. So now that that file has been run, we're going to start to peel away our gasket material that we've created. We used our engraving bit so that we can create both the ID and the OD of this tool path that we're gonna utilize. This is the tool and the, we cut the line larger than the tool we're gonna to use so the gasket uh, never gets touched as the tooling goes through there. Next line is for the vacuum cavity area. We've got this ready for the pumpkins. Brings it out to the very edge of the part even if there's a, a, a narrow piece out by the edge. And then because we have our eyes and mouth are going to be through holes, we want to account for that, leave a gasket wall. So as we cut through the part, we're not ruining our, or compromising our vacuum chamber area. So we got that out of there. Same thing for the, the nose and the eyes. And we left a quarter inch wall. You could always play with this depending on the size of your part. But boom, done there. And that's completed. Next thing we'll need to do is create our vacuum holes for the part, one hole per part. And we also have some pieces here that will account for the offcut. Obviously this isn't a spoil board downdraft, so we've got to hold on to the offcut as we cut these parts. That's what these are going to be for, quick hole. And uh, we'll go from there. Now we've got all the gasket in place. Uh, obviously gasket uh, is to prevent vacuum from escaping and because we're using a Baltic birch board uh, we got to get the vacuum to the part. So we're going to put a vacuum hole through each part also for the three spots to hold on to our waste cut because we don't want our waste flying around. So we're going to put a vacuum hole per part, let that gasket surround that area and uh, we're off and running. Right, as easy as that. So now we've got all of our holes. We like to use a 3 8 inch hole. That way we can always plug, once we're done, we get this back onto the vacuum grid, we can plug some of these holes that we're not utilizing to use half the board, a third of the board. So uh, we'll get this off of the spoil board. I'll turn off our vacuum. We'll go now. Let that vacuum turn off. 
We'll get our spoil board off of here, get this right onto the grid, and we'll start cutting some parts. Okay, so now that we got our dedicated fixture built, uh, obviously it took a little bit of time to do that, but most customers tell us over the years that the time spent making one of these fixtures more than makes up for itself when you go to make multiple parts and repetitive pieces. So now we're gonna throw some material on here. We got our blank boards, and we're gonna make these pumpkins in mass quantity with our dedicated fixture. Turn on our vacuum. Sheets are held in place. And we're off and running. We're using a quarter inch compression bit, so we'll get a clean cut on the top and bottom of the part. And again, we don't have the dust boot on just so you guys can see the cut as it's happening. We got 18 pumpkins per, per run. All cut out on the fixture. So we're off and running, that's the first one. Do all 16 in a row, we'll show you uh, when we're completed and uh, we'll go from there. Okay, there is our 18th and final pumpkin. Uh, and let me turn off this vacuum. And we're done. We cut all of our pumpkins in a single pass. Uh, no tabs or onion skins needed. Uh, as you can see here in the fixture, we went a little bit deeper than the part itself, so we're able to use our compression bits that we have available. Uh, that gives a clean edge on both sides. And going deep into a fixture isn't a problem because it's a non-porous material, so we can get that depth in there. And then when we look at underneath our, our material, we've got our vacuum uh, holding on to that waste piece. We probably would have held on to our waste piece of the eyes and mouth if they were a little bit bigger, but they're such small parts that uh, we didn't have to hold on to them. But the gasket is meant to keep our vacuum chamber area sealed up as we cut those through parts. So uh, next thing we're going to do is we're going to clean this table off, get all these uh, ideas off of here and we're going to plug some of these holes and we're going to cut some waste pieces. One of the benefits of using a dedicated fixture, got some of the waste pieces that we have around to make some more of these pumpkins uh, for the kids to give away at school. All right, cool. So now that we got the fixture cleaned off, we got all the parts off of there. We also dusted it off. You always want to make sure you don't have dust lying around that could compromise that vacuum seal. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to plug all of our holes. We always like to use a 3 8 inch hole so we can utilize the same plugs always to, to seal this area up. So we got 14 of the 16 pumpkins plugged up, as well as all of the holes that we had to hold onto our waste. Uh, and now I've got a little waste piece laying around, and I notice it is big enough to hold onto two pumpkins. So we can use that fixture, turn on that vacuum, and cut some more pieces out of some parts that we got laying around.
So there we have it. Two more pumpkins that we can add to our pile. And uh, that's just out of some waste pieces. It'd be tough to do that, such a small piece on an MDF spoil board. So this dedicated fixture, great opportunity to get uh, as many parts done as we can. What we'll probably do is we'll just mark it up as a uh, pumpkin and maybe date it, put it away on the shelf, and we can use this next year to do the same kind of idea. So uh, dedicated fixtures with cover gasket, great way to do those small parts on a repeat basis.